Look how amazing they look. This episode is a little bit different. We're gonna be surprising a first responder, but they think that we're here because we're surprising a military couple with a wedding. Not true at all. And it's not a house. It's an entire wedding venue. It's the biggest episode we've ever done, but we've gotta surprise them first. So let's go. Andy and Amanda have no idea what's about to happen. They think that today's interview is about a surprise wedding for another couple. Instead, the spotlight is on them because they were nominated for a makeover by the compassionate team at Spirit of a Hero, and their lives are about to change. What's going on? I don't know. Let's see how it can happen. Never go. Spirit. Amanda, can I have you come back here for just a second, please? We've been kind of lying to both of you. Okay. <laughs> because we're not doing a wedding for anybody else. Okay. And we're not doing a makeover for anybody else. Okay. We've come to help renovate your space and redo this venue for you, for the both of you. What? And if you allow us, we would love for you to have a vow renewal in your space when we've renovated it. So surprise, that's why everybody's here. <laughs> <laughs> and tell you all these things. Uh, Y'all tricked me. Yes. yes Y'all did a really good job. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Our secret squirrel mission worked and bringing the community together to witness and celebrate this special moment was truly heartwarming. Now I'm eager to dive into the makeover process, but first let's take some time to get to know Andy and Amanda better and hear their story. Amanda and I met um, at, actually at the fire department in Pilot Point. A year later, I asked her on a date. She said no. For some reason, I asked again uh, because I didn't like being told no. I think that was the big deal. <laughs> and I really liked her. Um, so she said yes the second time. After that, we just started seeing more of each other, actually. We dated for about two years, and then we decided to tie the knot. And then about two months later, we got pregnant um, with our first son, and we were on cloud nine plotted out what the rest of our life is gonna look like, made goals for ourselves, and then 24 hours later, he got hurt on the job. To me, it was a normal day at work. When we got toned out for the structure fire, we actually were not supposed to be the ones going to it. The other fire truck was, uh, they were out of service getting their physicals. We got to the house, it was a small house, a big fire, put the house out pretty quick and we had switched to overhaul, which is we're cleaning up now because the dangers of the fire's out. Got asked to go put a hot spot out in the laundry room. Went to put the hot spot out and I felt a hit on my shoulder. I didn't know what it was. I backed out, looked around, didn't see anything. Went back in, opened the nozzle, felt the same thing. Um, and as any fireman would typically do, instead of just backing out and finding what was wrong, I went further in. And because my, in my mind, I need to get it, my job's put the fire out, and then I need to get out, whatever the situation was. The third time in, I got stuck to the dryer, and my knee actually gave out and tore, uh, I tore my knee up, but that's really what saved my life. Typically, um, you would be thrown off to 20 to 240, but with the force of the water pushing me back and all my gear on, um, it, I couldn't get de detached from it. So the knee gave out and, and actually I radioed out after that that I, I knew at that time what it was. And I said, hey, I'm getting shocked. And the, I got up and walked out. And on the way out, they were ripping my gear off and trying to get me calmed down and they said that I had no color, that I was totally ghost white. That day I actually was working at Children's Hospital and I had missed call after missed call from his partner. And I finally stepped out and answered it and 
just he just said my name he's like Amanda and my world just like crashed because I didn't know what happened and at that point I was five months pregnant with our son and so I already had enough hormones going on as it was and he was like he's okay but we're on the way to the emergency room um, he we're not exactly sure but we think he got electrocuted and I got to to the hospital and I walked in and he was visibly shaking but his whole body was just vibrating and then that's when the doctor came in and they're like, we're not exactly sure, but we know based on your blood work that you're having muscle breakdown and you have um, enzymes and some other stuff that's not supposed to be there. They sent me home, told me to come back in 24 hours. I knew something was wrong, but I, I didn't know what. One night during dinner, maybe two months after. And I made mashed potatoes that night, chicken and mashed potatoes of all things. And we were eating dinner and he just stopped and he put his hand to his mouth and came out and his, his teeth had literally crumbled and were falling out. And we didn't know at the time, but they said that based on him clenching, because they didn't do x-rays, um, he had broken a lot and also killed the roots to his, most of his teeth, almost all of them. Yeah. That was, at first I thought it was my cooking and that was <laughs> gonna be bad, but it, that was probably the first like physical sign that we could show people like something's not right because up until this point it was this is how I feel I'm not able to do this and and I, we had noticed his posture had been changing and he was kind of getting annoyed with me because I was like why you need to sit you need to sit up straight and he physically couldn't um, little did we know his back was just shattered and broken when somebody messes with electricity and gets electrocuted, you either live, you die, or you're in the gray area. And the gray area can either be really close to perfect or it can be really close to death. And the problem is with these injuries is they're not cut and dry. I was 6'8 before my injury and I was 6'6", six, 6'5 six, six, and a half. So you've lost three inches of height and in you're kyphosis. So I, was like I had a hunchback. Your back is definitely fractured. And it's been five months, and the issue is it's healed. It's so anything we do from here on is going to be, we're gonna to have to break stuff to fix stuff. Somebody finally believed me, you know? I mean, it's five months of me and her, and I'm just, I'm like, I'm begging the doctors, like, it's not just a mental problem. I'm not just sick in my head. Something is, everything hurts. Something's wrong with me, and they just wouldn't listen. The first images were pretty terrifying of my back. We had the first back surgery, and that really was like a domino for me. Um, it was a six-level fusion. In one calendar year, I had three back major back surgeries. I just had my 24th surgery. We were so grateful that we found um, Dr. Kowalski, because she really, she, she saved everything. So it was seven and a half years total before I had teeth. Um, I, used to, I joke a lot that it, I mean, it was seven years before I could eat corn on the cob, you know, because I couldn't buy it with my teeth. So we celebrated the day that I could eat corn on the cob. I don't know. It's been a wild journey for us. And I, I do want to touch on one other thing about my injury that's very important to Amanda and I. During my back surgery, I got sterilized they told us we could never have any more kids. And that was tough because, you know, our mission was to have kids and have a family. We had the one boy, uh, Skyler, and a year later we had a miracle baby that they said couldn't happen. After that, they were like, this is, this is not happening again. You had your one miracle baby and that's, you know, it's not gonna work. So our mission was to have three kids and so we took everything we had and we went and we adopted a little girl. And she's been, she's wild and crazy. <laughs> but she has been such a blessing to us. And, you know, I think our, my message is you can't let something define you that shouldn't. And I don't think my injury defines who I am. And it doesn't define who we are as a family. This is one of our biggest makeovers yet. I'm pumped 
actually very excited and terrified all at the same time, but, but we're gonna get it done. Come over and I'll show you. Here's the plan. We're gonna paint the entire ballroom going from gray to white, add crown molding in the entire space. In the entryway, we're gonna be doing a board and batten feature and faux beams. We're also gonna do a seven foot board and batten feature on both ends of the ballroom with new barn doors. We have the bridal suite that we're gonna be doing an exposed brick look, the groom suite, give it a speakeasy vibe, and then new chandeliers, new wall sconces. Did I forget anything? I think there's a lot going on. Now you've seen the floor plan and the space is huge and budgets can be a fun sucker. Even on a one room makeover, it can be difficult. So it takes insane generosity and the community coming together to help support a project like this. These folks right here, right here. Love them. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. So I'm gonna wrap it up here because I'm gonna meet Caitlin. She is a really cool carpenter who builds barn doors. So we're gonna get some custom barn doors for this space. I'm Caitlin Kanabi with Kanabi Woodwork. I specialize in barn doors, custom furniture, and accent walls in the North Texas area. In 2014, me and my husband, Nick, built ourselves a headboard and posted it to Facebook. And that was the beginning of our business. I'm a small business owner and know the challenges that come with that and I love to help and support other local small businesses any way we can to strengthen our community, especially ones that put their lives on the line for mine. So with our plan firmly in place, it's time for the fun part. I'm aiming for a Texas glam aesthetic. I wanna strike a balance between functionality and style. We want these pieces to make a statement. We're working with a talented design team at American Furniture Warehouse, and their expertise and attention to detail makes them the perfect partner for this project. So excited! So this makeover is very different for us. We have this makeover for a first responder family when we're used to it being a military family that receives the makeover. However, there was an opportunity to bridge the gap and have military veterans and military spouses and veteran spouses come out and volunteer to contribute giving back to a first responder family, which there's so many um, just synergies between these two groups, the military veteran group and the first responder group. And so when we had the opportunity to meet Spirit of a Hero last year, it was a no brainer for us to partner with this organization after learning what they were doing to change the lives of not only our military and veterans and their families, but also the first responder community. New Res has been fully committed to our corporate social responsibility and our community investment. And we feel that we can give to any organization, but if we can partner with organizations and build the strength within the community, providing not only our employees an opportunity to volunteer and give back, but to collaborate with other members, then it's a win-win for everyone. Is it really weird being on camera? Yes, it is. It is? Fair. Like to ask you to do it again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one is fair. So, all right, we've got all hands on deck as several teams are working together to transform this space. And Amanda shared with me that she wished the cabinets in the bar area were black. We can't exactly swap out those cabinets, but no worries. The talented paint team from Ace Decor and Finishes, they're ready to roll up their sleeves and work their magic. And first things first, y'all, it's all about the prep and getting them ready for a fresh new look. So massive shout out to our friends over at Sherwin-Williams for generously donating all the paint we need and to 84 Lumber for donating all the building materials from the crown molding to the custom barn doors and the board and batten. Remember y'all, it takes a team effort to make this dream possible. And we're incredibly grateful for everyone who's come on board. So stay tuned, more updates, because this makeover is going to be stunning. Stunning. Looks like they're having some kind of big secret meeting over there and Rick is telling them to do something. I'm gonna go find out. Oh, okay, so we're embarking on a little adventure with the brave electrician in the attic labyrinth. We're gonna dodge some cobwebs and battle the insulation monster, all to bring light to every corner of this space. I'm glad it's him and not me, because there is not a lot of space up in here. The reason he's up here is because we've got to run wire down the walls for the sconces. And I'd kind of be a little freaked out. Claustrophobic, maybe? Hey! 
Jumping back through. Yeah, good time. I'm out. We were looking for a cost-effective way to add more charm to the space, and we decided on installing custom board and batten. It's a popular wall treatment that's classic. Remember when I said it takes a community effort to pull off a project like this? Big thanks to Radical Hospitality because they provided the food all week long. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, 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 Ciao, Tom. All right. Thanks for bringing lunch. Yeah, absolutely. We're happy to do it. So, uh, y'all doing some great work. Thank you, Borley and Board. board. Another way we decided to elevate the space is by adding sconces. They have a vintage yet really sleek look. Where this hits the scene. Yes. Can you hold this? Can someone hold this? That's six foot. Five foot. Can you remimic that for me real quick? And that's a wrap on day one. Pretty door. Everything's going on in there, everybody's working. I gotta go to the local home improvement store and grab some stuff. So, Chandy's letting me drive. <laughs> Simple task to go to the home improvement store and I locked the keys in a car. William will never let me live this down, ever. He's gonna bring it up forever. So weird fun fact, I have a vein on the side of my face that when I actually start pushing, it pops out. <laughs> Sorry, we get out of your way. This is our crazy mess that happens to us all the time. Our, our, our? I did not touch anybody. Our. Hot buttons on my door. Who knows that? Me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. All good now. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Appreciate you. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, everything is going smoothly. So I was a uh, forward observer um, with Alpha 3319th in the 2nd Brigade Combat Team of the 82nd Airborne Division. I went in in um, February of 89 at 18 years old. And uh, that, that same year of December, we jumped into Panama uh, when we got Manuel Noriega for Operation Just Cause. Shortly thereafter, we left for Desert Storm. And I was there for Desert Storm, Desert Shield as well. So I'm a... Uh, a general superintendent for an electrical contractor, which is one of the reasons that Andy's story resonates so well with me. It's just like, because I've been there, done that, I've been shocked myself. We select a critically wounded veteran in the DFW area every year and make a significant difference in their life. You know, because a lot of these guys, that they've been dealt a lousy hand at this point. They want to still be the best version of themselves. They want to still be the best dad they can be, the best husband they can be. And that to us is the spirit of a hero. Just like the drive that Andy has, you know, he was kind of dealt a lousy hand himself, but he's been driving on every day since then, you know, to support his wife and his family. And, you know, the Allisons have a great thing going on here. And uh, I was really, really excited to hear from our president that uh, this is the route we were going to go. And it was really neat to see the Allisons expression when we told him that you're going to get a makeover. <laughs> okay, so I have to share this with you because I think it's pretty amazing. This Texas glam look would not be complete without faux beans. They're lightweight, 
inexpensive and add tons of character to the entry. The original chandeliers that I ordered, I get this, you know, online message that says, they're both being delivered. And then one says, oh, but this one might not show up in time. So at the last minute, I had to order these chandeliers, which actually turned out great because I liked them better. And then the other chandelier showed up. But yeah. This is what we do when we love people. Because we are putting, what are we doing, right? We're putting on 400. I got it right here. Quantity 405. Of these crystals per chandelier. Okay, I'll put through the front bevel. And oh. 405 of these. No, 404 now. 404, because I've done one. <laughs> Chandy, Chandy broke one. I'm fired. cut-in box for the all the wires and stuff in there how low do you want that and where does that where is compared to behind, the behind the credenza somewhere Just directly under the tv maria, the yeah the maria yes. what day is today it is the last day we are finishing up because the big reveal is tomorrow nothing can go wrong nothing will go wrong good juju good vibes it's gonna all happen So we are doing an amazing prank on Maria. She sincerely does have a flat tire. That is not a prank, that just happened. But at the same time, why not go ahead and pretend her engine has exploded? You know, because I'm that way. Hence the smoke. But I feel it's so realistic. It's kind of realistic. <laughs> still kind of a hot mess in there. We're cleaning up and we're just a few minutes away from the furniture being delivered. And I can see him over there giving me the eye because I'm not completely ready. Y'all know me. I panic a lot and, and yeah, peace out. Wait, Maria, is that smoke coming out of your car? No! But y'all get in on it! Like you you just meet them and then you did you get him on it too? Yeah. <laughs> we just we just met you! She just like meets people and five seconds into meeting them. You know what, Chandy, what I learned? All done. All done. No makeover feels quite finished until the furniture pieces arrive. They're not just the finishing touches, they're the heartbeat of the space, breathing life into every corner. They effortlessly tie everything together, infusing the room with warmth and comfort, grounding the space and extending a welcome embrace to all who enter. I'm cross-eyed. It's two o'clock in the morning. We just finished this room. I'm not getting any sleep. This year we were going big, we're going big. And this entire makeover is about community. The people that have come in to help and support. I can't believe it. I really just, this is what building a community looks like. It is amazing. Wait till you guys see the makeover. I hope you like it. I do and you know I always get nervous that the family is gonna be like, oh, what? Fingers crossed. Think I got it? I hope so, I hope so. I hear, yeah, they're coming. I gotta go, gotta go. 
<laughs> hey guys, Hi. are you ready? Uh, yes, we're I'm very so excited. excited. You sure? Yeah, yes. well, I don't know what I'm walking into, but yes. yes. Lots of color. Yes. Yeah? Like a playhouse. Yes. You okay. guys think that's great that we did it like a playhouse? <laughs> they love it. They love it. They're like into Like I that. said, if you don't like it, it wasn't me. Okay, well. I didn't do anything. All right, I'm out. We're going to see you up there. Okay. Bye. Okay. We're going. We're doing the things. Look how amazing it looks. Andy and Amanda stepped into the space and they noticed every detail. I aim to make their entry an unforgettable wow moment from the bold choice of painting the ceiling black and seamlessly bringing it down the wall to meet the whiteboard and batten to the addition of faux beams and elegant sconces. I wanted to craft an atmosphere of understated elegance with a touch of drama. It's a subtle yet powerful statement that screams this place is absolutely perfect for our wedding. A lot going on, isn't it? Come on in. Oh. The groom's suite was initially feeling a bit cramped and it needed an updated vibe. I decided to play with shades of green, opting for a bolder approach from painting the ceiling and molding to even the door in a striking eclipse green. I also opted to switch out the bulky chairs with something a little more streamlined and the swivel leather chairs bring a modern warmth, complemented by the addition of a cozy cowhide rug. And to pay homage to Andy's firefighter roots, We've added a few special touches to make this space unique. So this is uh, Omar Bawan. He's our 2015 Spirit of Air recipient. Omar was working on an IUD that started to cook off. He ran for cover and stepped on another IUD, threw a 40, landed on a third IUD. Your fire good flag. That's amazing. Thank you. It's awesome. Thank you. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. You know that magical moment when the bride steps into her suite craving all the feels? That was my inspiration for creating a space that's not just luxurious, but utterly enchanting. I couldn't resist the charm of exposed brick juxtaposed against the sheer glamour of a crystal chandelier and plush velvet seating. I wanted every bride to walk in and be instantly enveloped in a romantic haven where they're made to feel truly special on their big day. I want to live in here. <laughs> How did you make I think we have a wedding. We have yeah, a yeah. Uh, vow yeah. renewal. It is time. Head on over to the groom street. Get ready. All right. We're going to stay with me. Get out of here. Let them get ready.
Sir, you may kiss your bride. Thank you very much for watching this very special episode of Moving with the Military. That's a wrap. See you on the next one. Woo!